the question of how you translate brain science into leadership skills is a fascinating one. And in the field I work in, interpersonal neurobiology, what we do is look at what the brain is all about, looking at brain science, but then looking at other fields of science, like relationship science and the way the mind functions. And when you put those three things together, mind, brain, and relationships, you actually get a very large picture of how a leader can actually use neuroscience in particular, but part of a larger framework. So one thing we've noticed is that when you put those three fields together, relationship science, mind science, and brain science, you come to this fascinating view that the way the mind works is by allowing energy and information to be coordinated and balanced both within the nervous system, there's the brain science part, and within relationships. For example, how Dan and I are sharing energy and information with you listening to us right now. When you realize that energy and information is not limited to the skull and it's not even limited by the skin, then you can track that and you can look at a process called self-organization, which is basically how does this system get coordinated and balanced? And what a deep analysis of self-organization reveals is that optimal self-organization is dependent on something called integration, differentiating parts like the left from the right or the higher from the lower parts of the brain, or Dan and I differentiating each other from each other, Dan G and Dan S, or how in an organization different uh, departments can differentiate each other, differentiate from each other, and then work to collaborate together. So linkage of differentiated parts is how you define integration. And the bottom line is when we look at how these systems function, integration seems to be the base of well-being so that just a few weeks ago, the Human Connectome Project, this interdisciplinary international set of studies looking at how the different regions of the brain in the head are connected to each other reveals that the number one feature that's associated with positive traits in your life, positive aspects of your health, of your relationships, of what you're doing in your lifestyle, it's the interconnected nature of the differentiated parts, what we would say is integration. So now there's a lot of evidence to support the idea that integration is the basis of well-being. And so when we look at the neuroscience of that, you can actually see through the field of neuroplasticity how you as a leader, or if you're coaching a leader, how you as a coach can actually support the growth of regions of the brain that create more integration in the nervous system. And it turns out that every form of regulation, regulating attention, mood and emotion, thought, behavior, even relationships, all are based on integration in the brain. And so there are specific techniques you can learn to promote more integration in the brain, which is the basis of not only well-being, but the basis also, I think, of innovation and also of kindness and compassion. So this is where neuroscience meets the broad field of science so that we can actually create positive changes in our life. There are uh, a couple of very fine-grained ways in which coaches can use neuroscience information. Uh, Dan has a, a beautiful integrated model, uh, Dan Siegel, of uh, how, to, how all of this integrates together. And that's the optimal uh, perspective. But then in coaching and in the workplace, you see many people, leaders, team leaders, presidents, all levels, who are quite uneven in this integration. They have areas that aren't quite connecting. Maybe they're not connecting with other people. I was remembering um, someone at a very large tech company told me, we have an, an amazing, brilliant systems analyst, but we can't let, let him in, uh, be in front of clients because he doesn't know how to talk to them. He doesn't know how to relate to them. I mean, there's someone who has real strengths in parts of the brain and a real deficit. And if that person were to come for coaching, you'd want to help them understand using interpersonal neurobiology, using an understanding of the brain, and using methods that help remedy these uh, deficits. What can that person do, as Dan said, to use neuroplasticity in a positive way, to expand the parts of the brain, to expand the circuitry that's not quite clicking?
and and it's that kind of where the rubber re meets the road of science and performance that we want to go into on our webinar.